Praise the Lord. Good morning and welcome to the Sunrise with Jesus. Friends, uh, very many of us have had a growing up in nuclear families, which is the norm in most countries, but in a few Asian countries is not exactly the norm where we also have joint families. Now, the nuclear family, to be very specific, is where you identify family as dad, mom, brother, sister. And of course, we also have those big extended family reunions. And these are very, very memorable events where uh, so many of us would have to testify that there has never been a family reunion where you don't leave without getting into a quarrel with an opinionated uncle or you uh, are wounded by a whole set of comments by some uh, excessively interested aunts or of course you have these crazy exchange of information or crazy times with your crazy crazy cousins and in on the whole this kind of is also very very special because it really helps us to develop bigger hearts for us to know that uh, just beyond the people who are immediately connected to us are a whole set of people who still belong to us. And family has several purposes and of course the first is to give us a sense of identity. And secondly, to give us that great support, that, that support that makes us emotionally strong people. And also we should not forget that families provide so much of entertainment. And today we are going to look at the larger, great, grand and holy family that we all belong to, the family of the Catholic Church. And this is so important because we're going to look at what type of Catholic we are. It's very necessary to look there because when we know where we stand, we also would know how we need to proceed to be more faithful and more pure and more blessed Catholic Christians. Friends, one of the most bewildering places in the world for me is my mother's kitchen because when you look at her kitchen shelves, you would see a hundred or more containers of different shapes and sizes and uh, in each of these containers are different types of spices and combination of spices and different types of grains and even different types of rices and different types of sauces and mixtures. And one day I remember uh, turning and offering my mother a, a, a big service. I, I told her that I could set apart two days and, and just sit with her and label every one of those containers with the name of what is in it and uh, what needs to be used, how much spoonfuls for, for what dish it is used. And uh, I realized that my very uh, generous offer wa was very unwelcome to her because she just brushed me off saying that I should go and work in a pharmacy. And coming to think of it like, when you go to a pharmacy, you can really admire the way they have arranged and classified the, the hundreds and thousands of medicines they have. So whatever type of medicine you want, you have, you want an aspirin or you want a betadine or you want a calcium or you want a, a, a disprin or whatever you want, you just need to say the name of that tablet a different set of company can have a different name for the same uh, tablet, the same medicine. And this brilliant pharmacist will go exactly in a matter of few seconds, locate that medicine among the whole, whole set of plenty of medicines and bring it to you. And that's so great when we can classify and label things because it really uh, helps us to be efficient. But the fact is also that classifications don't always work like in the kitchen of my mother. So today we're going to look at how we have classified and labeled ourselves as Catholics within the church. We have classified and labeled ourselves and how we need to review the labels we bear and what it really calls us to be. 
and the first type of catholic and i would like you to to keep your ears open and see where you fit in and where you don't and what you think about what you can learn from this category of catholics and the first type of catholic is the cradle catholic like so most of us are cradle catholics and that's like something really big which means you were born a catholic so if anyone asks me why are you a catholic well that's the most ridiculous question to ask a cradle catholic i am catholic because my parents are catholic and um, we feel very good about ourselves we are like these children who are born into big business empires we don't need to look for a job we don't need to worry about who's going to pay our bills our our dad is in the business so we get into the business and our bills get paid by the company and that's exactly the understanding of very many uh, cradle catholics i'm catholic and uh, i just don't need to work for it. it i've got everything that i need to get and there's a lot of pride in us because uh, uh, we kind of know a lot of things it just was part of our upbringing and the good thing is there's a, a lot of uh, rich uh, values and traditions and virtues uh, which for us is not something that we take from the catechism of the catholic church but is already a part of our system and of course there's also the other side to it that there are different types of cradle catholics for instance uh, a cradle catholic like me when i look at someone who says he's catholic and doesn't go for mass i'm shocked because you're catholic that means you go for mass and of course there are some cradle catholics who because you're catholic don't need to go for mass and then then again uh, i could get scandalized uh, like the pharisee i could get scandalized and i can you don't abstain during lent i mean are you catholic and you don't know a novena has nine days well that's crazy because novena is nine days we really are people who are very comfortable there's a second set of catholics and that is the ancestral catholics or orthodox catholics now who are these people it's like um, let me give you an example now i am feeling so good about myself because i'm a cradle catholic for the last four centuries but then i come across this this guy who i'm sitting next to and i'm like okay i'm cradle catholic and uh, you know we got converted in 1600 and something and that's when uh, this says oh this person says oh Oh, you're just a cradle Catholic. I am a Thomas Catholic. And so what does it mean? That means like two millennia, two millennia, 2000 years, they've been Catholic. It is in fact noteworthy for us to know that in the Catholic Church, uh, the Roman Catholics, who most of us are, uh, we are just one right. There are 23 rights of Catholics. And what is this 23 rights? It's not like R-I-G-H-T, but R-I-T-E. These are people who have received the tradition of the faith and the rituals from various apostles. So uh, there are people in India who have uh, received the faith right from the apostle Thomas and through uh, the elders of the older churches, the Syrian churches. Now, the great thing about uh, such Catholics is they have this great treasure trove of traditional uh, blessings and prayers and uh, it is such a fabulous and spiritual experience to participate in their funerals and and in their uh, uh, special festal services their observances and prayers are so rich and so poetic and and so edifying and of course uh, here again like it is in uh, practically every label of catholic there's always a sense of like uh, i know a little more so i have these two friends and both of them are traditional uh, orthodox catholics but both belong to two different rites so one day they were arguing and one of them actually said well when saint thomas arrived uh, we already were there to receive him with scapulars around our neck. So uh, there are some Catholics uh, who are more Catholic than the Apostles. Like there are plenty of Catholics who are more Catholic than the Pope. Now we have the third type of Catholic and these are the convert Catholics. And these are amazing people. I believe uh, God has raised them up, called them specially in order to shake the rest of us up. Because usually the convert Catholics are people who have paid a price to get baptized so they've had a personal deep experience a life-changing experience of Jesus and for which they had to break with tradition they had to go against a lot of opposition 
uh, they're very, very zealous and um, uh, they're people who are very keen to share their journey. And for very many of the rest of the Catholics, especially the cradle Catholics, we feel very good about having them. On the one hand, we keep saying, wow, look at them, look at their zeal. Well, uh, their zeal is because they're new, so which means like we don't really need it. We are like born into the wealth. And, and also we feel good that sometimes they may not know certain details uh, of the traditional faith that we already know. And very often we are surprised because sometimes they know more than we do. And then there's the fourth type of the Catholic and these are like the people happening Catholics the people who are all over the world and these are the charismatic Catholics so charismatic Catholics like so many of us owe so much to them because uh, too many of us have been as perhaps as cradle Catholics lived a very cold and uh, very unaffected existence thinking our Catholicism was just a label uh, but not an experience not a commitment and it is through the charismatic renewal in the church that we came to understand what is the power of the Holy Spirit what is the beauty of living a vibrant Christian life the charismatic Catholics took us back to the early church the church of the Holy Spirit the charismatic uh, movement in fact gave very many of us an experience of the Lord and uh, not only did it introduce us, it kind of reconverted us who are already Catholics, but it also uh, formed us to live responsible lives. And uh, we see that everywhere in the world, in the church, there's uh, so much of hope because of these charismatic Catholics and uh, Catholics who belong to the new spiritual uh, movements. Now, the, there is also, when we look at these charismatic Catholics, we realize that uh, like in every group, there are uh, some people who can, who can be very bad advocates, very sad brand ambassadors. So uh, while on the one hand, you see a lot of joy in the faith that is uh, lived out by the charismatics because in charismatic uh, worship you have a lot of singing and you have a lot of loud praising and and a free worship you also have some people who imagine that uh, uh, praying is a shouting match or uh, they kind of can become very superficial in the exercise of their charismatic gifts on the one hand we see that how alive the holy spirit is that every one of us have a gift the gift of prophecy or healing or preaching every every catholic has a gift to exercise to build the faith and build the church but then there are some who would uh, exercise the gifts without any discernment and then there are also those who who are very busy dividing and creating a lot of divisions and getting uh, super super loyal to their own little prayer group or to their own little retreat center and trying to put people off from others so this is like the ugly politics that's uh, uh, that is practiced by this teeny weeny little ugly minority in every group and being in the charismatic of course we have experienced such uh, persons and then we have the more uh, common varieties of uh, label catholics for instance uh, we have the sunday catholics like the, they are like catholics who are catholic because they come for the sunday mass they don't need to be there for the whole mass but they just mark their presence and so they are catholic and then we have the choir catholics well these are beautiful people uh, they come to the church and they make the mass so beautiful but you know they're there because of the choir only so they're there to sing they are very busy throughout the whole mass looking at what scale they need to sing what pitch and for the rest of the time they're quite absorbed in each other and uh, having a lot of their little private fun and not all choir groups are like this but these are the choir catholics and then uh, we also have the front benchers and some of the older generations and even some of the younger generations are people who would insist on sitting in the front row and there are some who would even fight for a replace in the front row and how I wish there were more of such uh, front benchers and then you have the backbencher Catholics who even in the biggest of cathedrals and the emptiest of churches want to attend mass from the gallery from the last bench and then you have the whole breed of the outstanding Catholics outstanding only because they stand out but not because of any other virtue 
and then you have of late with the pandemic the online Catholics well these are amazing people they are there in their homes and they are so spiritual they are attending prayer meeting after prayer meeting Bible course after Bible course mass and adoration and everything online and and they get they're learning so much and they're praying so much and they don't want to go back to church so even if the church is open they would go to the malls they would go to the cinemas but they cannot go back to the church so we have the very 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 uh, hardcore online Catholics then we have the post Catholics now post Catholics are not the Catholics who keeps posting posting Catholic stuff on social media but post Catholics are those who are uh, are retired from the Catholic Church. They were, they imagine they were once lost in this great big family, and they found uh, a church of their own making where they have some kind of a role and importance. And then you have the political Catholics. Well, political Catholics are those who have uh, based themselves on certain issues. So I could be a gay rights supporter Catholic, and uh, which means, of course, I don't agree to their. Uh, to any kind of sin in their relationships. I don't agree to their right to have a relationship uh, as a traditional married Catholic would have, but I support their rights or I could be an anti-gay Catholic or I could be an environmentalist Catholic. So there are a lot of uh, political Catholics. And so we have a whole range of people who define themselves by their political stance or their feelings or there could even be certain people based Catholics. So I'm a Catholic because of my parish priest. I have this, uh, uh, I go to church only because this parish priest is good to me and when he gets transferred I stop going to church. Or I am in the church because of this person. I am not in the church because of this person. And then we are coming to a very uh, new and strong demarcation or labeling classification of two groups of Catholics. And uh, this is very, very important for us because today we are more and more asked whether you are on this side or you are on that side. So I'm referring to the great divide between the people who insist that they are traditionalists or fundamentalists or the conservative Catholics and on the other hand you have the liberal Catholics so you can imagine the impact of world politics on some people who are in the Catholic Church so the traditional Catholics and I'm talking about the good form of it because everything has a little bit of a sick form as well the good form of a traditional Catholic is these people are people who are of the heart. Now these are people who study the scripture, who devote themselves to learning apologetics, who understand, uh, who have studied the great traditions, the teachings of the saints and they kind of really know why we do everything. So the rituals are like the celebration of the mass, the liturgical practices. They know every detail of it and every detail of how it evolved. So this is really great because people who are traditionalist Catholics, traditional Catholics, conservative Catholics, these are people who can greatly, greatly enrich the way we practice our faith. They help us to go to the heart of our rich Catholic worship and yet let me at this point tell you every one of us should be charismatic Catholics we are meant to be people of the Holy Spirit and every one of us should be traditional Catholics but at the same time very very often sadly perhaps the most vocal members of traditional groups are people who are no more rooted and grounded in fundamentals in the roots in the in the basic heart of our worship slipping to be fundamentalist and mind you it's not a small slip but it's a mighty fall 
because a fundamentalist who calls himself or herself a traditional or conservative Catholic is in fact no Catholic nor Christian because they are these people with a spectacle type of Christianity you know what I mean what Jesus says they're busy looking for the speck in the other's eye when they have a log in their own eye these are people who are waiting to find fault you see a lot of hate in their hearts and they come to resemble at one point they come to resemble the supremacist hate groups now what is a supremacist group well these are you know like like you know these several hate groups they are people who imagine that they are all right their ide ideologies are all perfect and therefore they are higher than others and they advocate hatred and intolerance to anyone whom they see in any way differing from them. Now we see in these type of hate group, fundamentalist, uh, super traditional as they would choose to call themselves Catholics, such people we see that there is on the one hand fault finding spirit Second, there's a great over obsession with the devil. They would uh, call anyone who doesn't uh, agree with them as devilish. They seem to have a lot of faith in the presence of the devil. Uh, and thirdly, they are people who have become uh, a point of a venue or solace for all those who have a very injured ego and people who are dissenters who are very discontented dissenters and also the fourth thing about these uh, super traditional Catholics is that they are people with a lot of tendency a kind of a goal to divide we see when there was this big uh, hate campaign against the Pope so they look at everything that the Pope says and thinks and does and and they're very busy trying to say that he is uh, definitely not Catholic he's an agent of Satan all sorts of horrible hateful things and and the moment we see a person a group a YouTube channel who claims to be traditional and conservative Catholic but who is working against the very principles of Catholicism who's working against the Pope who's working to divide who's working against the basic command of Christianity which is love who are held together by their hatred and their arrogance we must know that these definitely are wolves in sheep clothing and we need to be very careful no matter whatever type of Catholic you can accommodate in this family know that these are people who are not part of the Catholic Church and we cannot afford to associate with such and then we have on the other side the liberal Catholics now liberal Catholics on the face of it they're very very fashionable people they're like really cool um, they have this very big heart they're open to others they embrace everything some of them uh, would insist that they are Pope Francis disciples so they maybe very many of them found a certain openness in the kindness and mercy that Pope Francis has been teaching a lot about emphasizing on and they are finding their way back to the church but uh, and a liberal Catholic if he or she is revealing to us the great open heart of Jesus for sinner and saint for a Pharisee and prostitute person who can welcome and dialogue with anyone and uh, be able to respect them and lead them to Jesus well that exactly would be the ideal liberal Catholic but very very many of us could claim to be liberal Catholics only because we think it can support our careless uh, uncommitted type of lifestyle now if a person claims to be liberal Catholic and has no regard for the the structures the traditions the prayers well then definitely we can be so sure that uh, these are not Catholics, not Christ-centered Catholics, but I-centered Catholics because it suits my comfort-loving priorities. Now friends, when we have looked at all these varieties of Catholics, 
we could be drawn to one over the other because we have met fine people in one or the other group and this is not for us to say that there should not be groups this is not for us to say that some groups are better than the others but it is for us to understand that over and above these labels every one of us should be jesus type of catholics we need to be christian catholics well let us look at jesus and there are a few pointers that truly will decide whether we are catholic at all or not and the first is jesus was committed to the scripture he was committed to the jewish scripture what we have as the old testament and he clearly says i have not come to abolish the law and the prophets but to fulfill it and he would remind us that not even a letter or even a part of a letter can be in any way discarded from scripture because scripture is sacred secondly we see he was committed to the traditional practices of prayer whether it was jesus or the apostles we find mention in the bible that it was their custom to observe the sabbath it was their custom to go to the synagogue none of them were beyond the synagogues thirdly we see and this is very important that they were led by the holy spirit and this man jesus was a person of compassion he insists on compassion insists on respect and concern even for those whom you think are not part of your righteous perfect group but a great regard for the other with compassion fourthly we see an insistence on humility jesus says i have come to serve and not to be served and to give my life as a ransom for many and that is exactly the next thing that we see is that to be a christian to be a person who is anointed by god is to commit your life in the service of god and neighbor and friends a jesus christian is what jesus would present to that samaritan woman he said god is seeking those who worship in spirit and in truth we need to be yes very clear very rich in the knowledge of scripture and tradition but we also need to be ensure we are people who are alive and sensitive to the holy spirit and we prove this by lives of kindness and compassion and therefore before us we have the great model of veronica now veronica is not there in the bible but she definitely was a person who was present in the early catholic church and what we see of veronica was this she was standing as part of a huge congregation watching jesus carrying his cross and heading to calvary she knew she was a small person and she could in no way do anything big for jesus she could not wave away the death sentence she could not die in his place she could not even carry his cross but what she had was a little piece of damp cloth and she would break the arrangement she would break the mold and rush out risking the scorn of people risking those who would doubt her motives but she would reach out and meet the need of the hour the need of the hour that compassion demands she would wipe the face of jesus offering him that minute temporary relief but when she walked away from there she would have the image of christ what we today venerate as the shroud of turin which gives us some hint of what jesus's physical appearance was but more importantly that reminds every one of us that it is in our commitment to jesus and in reaching out in compassion that we become bearers of the image of the lord friends this is what being christian and being catholic is and for your information 
The word Christian appears in the Bible referring to the people of God, the people, the apostolic church that was there in the first century. And it is first used in the Christian community of Antioch. You read this in Acts chapter 11 verse 26. And the word Catholic was also first used by the church father, Saint Ignatius of Antioch. And he is using this as he is writing a letter to the Smyrnaeans, the church of Smyrna, when, when he is being taken to his martyrdom. And he writes to the people of Smyrna, especially urging them to stand by their bishop. And he says, where the bishop is there, the people of God must stand. They must stand with the bishop. And then he says, just as where, the ch where Jesus is, there the Catholic church is. Wherever Jesus is, there the Catholic Church is. And of course, over the subsequent centuries, we see as Saint Jerome and Saint Augustine and several of the other saints, they use the Catholic Church very specially to reveal to us that this is a community of those who truly and faithfully follow the scripture and the teachings of the apostles as against heretics. Heretics were those who would claim to be Christians but propound a gospel that was not of Jesus Christ. And friends, in this world and in our church, we have plenty, plenty of haters, diluters, people who dilute the faith, dividers, drifters, and we have plenty of people who are heartless, plenty of people who are cold and passionless. What we really need are now people who will faithfully bear the image of Christ. People who will walk in the footsteps of Veronica. And that is what we see in the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church is defined by unity. Unity being one, being united. Secondly, sanctity, a clear choice for holiness. Thirdly, apostolicity, and that is faithfulness to the teachings of the apostles and faithfulness to the Pope. And fourthly, Catholicity, a certain sense that we have arms open to receive the entire family of those who follow who live for and believe in Jesus. And we are united with that one spirit, a spirit of love for God and compassion and respect for the neighbor. Jesus, we enthrone you. We proclaim you are King. Standing here in the midst of us We raise you up with our praise And as we worship build your throne And as we worship build your throne And as we worship build Lord Jesus, and take your place. And as we worship, build your throne. And as we worship, build your throne. And as we worship, build your throne. Come, Lord Jesus, and take your place. Come, Lord Jesus, take your place in our hearts, in our families this morning. Come, Lord Jesus, take your place in our minds, our hearts, our attitude. Come, Lord Jesus, give us the strength. When you are there, we fear nothing, Lord. Because, Lord, you come and you take your place in us. And this is your blessings, your grace that comes every morning, Lord. You come to fill our hearts. You come to give us the strength. You come to give your word to us, God. 
that we may live according to your will your word your plan in our lives yes lord as the word of god says in hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 it says let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in a time of need your grace and mercy is so important god every morning you bless us abundantly lord for those who know you they receive the blessings every morning a new day a new beginning yes lord and for those who are far away from you lord to them we proclaim that the throne of grace is always at hand especially when you come into the presence of jesus in the blessed sacrament his grace and mercy is radiated to each one of us looking at him his grace fills our eyes that we may see him with a pure eyes with pureness of our heart with pureness of our mind that we keep nothing that is of the world but we receive grace upon grace and that is the promise jesus and as we worship lord build your throne because the throne is so important that we come drawn to it to adore you to worship you to give us his blessing to sustain for this new day bless the lord oh my soul bless the lord oh my soul oh my soul and worship his holy Sing like never before Oh my song I worship your holy name Lord I worship Lord I worship your holy name Lord I worship Lord I worship your holy name Hallelujah Hallelujah We praise you Jesus thank you Lord Hallelujah Most holy, most sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine, be every moment thine. The Ministry of the Divine Retreat Center needs your support as they continue in their commitment to preach the good news of Jesus through the weekly retreats, the daily online and television ministry, through the service of 3,000 disadvantaged persons, the mentally challenged, the aged, the destitute women, the sick and abandoned and economically disadvantaged families. If you are inspired to share in this ministry through the sacred service of almsgiving, we invite you to send your love offering to Divine Charitable Trust CD account number 0402231. 
ಎಚ್ ಡಿ ಎಫ್ ಸಿ ಬ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಚಾಲಕುಡಿ ಬ್ರಾಂಚ್ ಐ ಎಫ್ ಎಸ್ ಸಿ ಕೋಡ್ ಎಚ್ ಡಿ ಎಫ್ ಸಿ ಜೀರೋ 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 ಫೋರ್ ಜೀರೋ ಟು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಮೇಲ್ ದ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ಸ್ ಟು ಡಿವೈನ್ ರಿಟ್ರೀಟ್ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಆಟ್ ಜಿಮೇಲ್ ಡಾಟ್ ಕ